What's up, everybody? Hold on. Sorry. What's up, everybody? Make it make sense. Click the like button as the intro plays because we have a lot to get into. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. I want to make it make sense. Make it make sense. That's all. One and one got to equal two. Make it make sense, boo. Make it make sense. Tell me how you squeeze it. Make it make sense. Tell me about the things that you say. Make it make sense. Tell me about the things in your dreams. Hey, let me work out all the things in between. Make it make sense. Tell me how you squeeze it. Make it make sense. Tell me about the things that you say. Make it make sense. Tell me about the things in your dreams. Hey, let me work out all the things in between. Make it make sense. Trying to run, she can't run. Now, 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 who can't run? Now, who can't run? Who can't run? Yeah, yeah. Okay, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell was that um if you don't know i've been following steve harvey shirley strawberry marjorie harvey jim townsend i've been following it all so that you guys don't necessarily have to but um <laughs> somebody said they fast forward through the opening credits yeah my intro crystal crystal harris my intro is a little bit crazy but it's like me and the straight shooters Anyway, so y'all, this was so many things. We got Shirley Strawberry having to go to her boss and have a conversation about her talking about his marriage. <laughs> it's a lot. Yes, happy Monday. Happy Monday. So if you don't know, I'm going to catch you up because everybody does not know specifically what was said. So Shirley Strawberry works for Steve Harvey and the Steve Harvey Morning Radio Show, number one show, number one morning show, right? Syndicated on a lot of different places. But this is what she had to say specifically about Marjorie Harvey. And then we'll get into, you know, her response in the, the Shirley Strawberry letter. That's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> You know what? They have a uh, Marjorie has her own spa, her own workout room, and her own spa. And she could go in there and get um, massages every day. People come to her house and um, damn, uh, and work her out and all of that. I was like, oh god, what a dream! <laughs> Does she look old though? Does she look like she's getting old? No, I haven't seen her, but she looks good on her pictures. Oh, she ain't there. No, she's not there. If she was there, we probably wouldn't have been all over the house. <laughs> <laughs> now. Technically, we all talk trash. Technically, nobody would probably want their intimate phone calls recorded. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about somebody actually talking about how they feel about Marjorie Harvey in that circle. Now, technically, would Shirley be in the circle? No, because Marjorie probably thinks of her as the help, like we find out. Uh, what's up, AT2? <laughs> but okay, let's continue. <laughs> Done it. No, you know he's scared. Damn, sure, right. God, we said, you know, he's scared. God, <laughs> so he's scared of Marjorie. That, yeah, that, yeah everything. I, I knew I wasn't supposed to be in there, but he, he brought us in, so I said, okay. <laughs> but I mean, I'm glad he did because it gives you a chance to dream. You know, it's like, wow, have a sauna in your house, have a steam room, you know, all the things that you go outside of the house to do. Not that, but things like that, I would love to have inside. So I wouldn't have to. Okay. So basically, everybody feels like the help around Marjorie, allegedly. I'll put my banner up because who knows what Steve is about to start doing and we're going to get into it. We have some things to get into. So, Shirley, I told you guys when I reviewed that phone call, I said Steve is going to have to address it. Not because he's so close to Shirley, but because Shirley is in the inner circle, right? Shirley saying it is different than me saying it is different than Tim Jim Townsend saying it. It's different. 
because she is in there. She's in the know. And that forced Steve's hand. Not to mention Steve has all of these other rumors swirling about Marjorie cheating. I personally chose not to really go in depth on the Marjorie cheating rumors because I can't substantiate that at all. Um, so I just didn't go there. But there are a lot of other channels that you could check out that, you know, will talk about Marjorie's alleged cheating and all that. So let's get into it. <laughs> uh, I think it's this one. We decided to just address it since it's out there. You know, it's one thing when we're dealing with gossip, rumor, and hearsay. That's one thing. You know, uh, I, I've dealt with this for years. But when it's not gossip and it, and it comes from, you know, a, a, a reliable source, you, I mean, then it, it turns into something different. And so, you know, we, all of this trending stuff and all this here, and so... After some deliberation, uh, we got together. Now, here's the deal about this strawberry letter. I have no idea what Shirley's going to say. Uh, I told Shirley that it was up to her how she wanted to address it. You know, uh, I did go along with this as an idea. I'm not I'm not saying I did. Um, really quickly, uh, Jay Holland says she didn't say anything bad to me. Here's the deal. <sighs> Marjorie Harvey is Steve Harvey's Achilles heel will always be so when jim townsend came out like there were always rumors calling marjorie a queen pin and all that when jim townsend came out it upped the ante steve harvey had been having bad press from his first wife essie berry tasha k for years and those videos got millions of views it kind of died down until a new generation picked it up TikTok. people only know marjorie as Lori's mom Nobody knew Marjorie's background. That's why Steve is addressing it. That's why it's so bad because it just it it adds to what is already horrible for publicity for somebody who feels like their publicity should just be fashion week. And I have this beautiful daughter who can date Diddy and my husband. We have the largest home in Atlanta or the second largest home in Atlanta or whatever. Nobody expected this stuff to keep coming out. And unfortunately for Steve, now you have an employee basically saying, you know, Marjorie is something in person. I didn't do that because uh, we talked about it as a radio family and decided this may be the best way, you know, because it's not it's no longer rumor. It's no it's not gossip or, or anything. You know, this this is something that's really touching us all right now. Right. And so, yeah, this is not. This is a strawberry letter. And like, you know, I was, you know, being sarcastic when I did the tease last week. The strawberry I want to point one other thing out before we really get into this. Steve Harvey has a lot of bad publicity because of who Steve Harvey is to his employees. Earlier in the show, they talked about um, Jimmy Fallon, who has employees saying he created a hostile work environment. Steve absolutely just sided with Fallon and said they were disgruntled employees. You don't get it. Things have changed. Just because you have money or the CEO does not mean that you can't speak to people. I think it was, I think there was a letter saying, don't look at him, don't speak to him unless spoken to. Just because you own a business or you are the head of the ship does not mean that your stress level is any greater than the next person's. People have deadlines, children can't pay their bills, but this is that celebrity mentality. I'm better than you. My problems are worth more than your problems. Are they? Um, my CEO speaks to everybody. Everybody. You could actually, you know, people can probably actually reach out and call my CEO and he would listen. So you're not alone in this, Steve. You're just choosing to do it a certain way. And now... Your slip is showing, or technically Marjorie's slip is showing, because your employee actually said, I couldn't do this, or I couldn't go to this part of the house if she was there, and he's scared of her, and all those things. Your slip is showing, and Marjorie, we, we... we'll get into it, we'll get into it. Strawberry letter is, I didn't know, the subject was, I didn't know I was going to be my own letter, you know, and, which is true. Now, oftentimes, I joke about it. Some of these letters sound like I was in it, but this one is. 
And so today, uh, the way I want, I'm going to do it, Shirley, I'm going to just let you talk. Okay. Uh, I think, it, to me, I think it's up to you to be as honest or revealing as you choose to be. You know, we can talk about uh, as much of it as you like. Uh, but I think it's an opportunity for you to say what you want to say and, and, and share your feelings on it. And then we'll have an exchange about it. Okay. All right. All right, Steve. I'm going to just start by saying that. Um, you know, she had a lump in her throat. I, wa I listened to this whole thing from very early this morning. I listened to the whole thing, all the music, everything included. And you could tell that this was causing her so much stress and so much anxiety. But she said what she said. And for that, I respect her. My estranged husband is in jail. Um, he's been in jail for over a year uh, since about the right after the 4th of July of 2022. And recently, some uh, phone calls from last year between he and I were leaked. And uh, on those calls, you hear me saying um, you were winded going up the stairs at your home. And um, Marjorie looks at us as the help. And right here and now, um, I want to apologize to you and Marjorie for what I said. Um, as much as I wish I could, I can't take it back. I can't. I said it and you know, I want to apologize. It was definitely um, not me trying to add to what you and Marjorie already have going on in your lives right now. Um, but the fact that these tapes were released, it does seem like everyone is coming to you, at, coming for you, I should say, at this time, including me. But in reality, the tapes have nothing to do with what you and Marjorie have going on. It was just me running my mouth in a private conversation or what I thought was a private conversation. And again, I apologize. I feel terrible. I make no excuses. You know, I, I said what I said. And uh... now, first of all, absolutely. She said exactly what she said. What and she makes no excuses. no excuses for it. For that, I respect you. That's basically saying I apologize that this got out. I apologize my private conversation got out, but um I said what I said. Okay. And I'm not taking it back. <laughs> Kudos to her. I said what I said. Okay. Right. And I think that the majority of the people here watching or who listened feel the same way. I don't think that she necessarily said anything wrong. She said, you know, pillow. Well, can you have pillow talk from a prison prison pillow talk with your with your husband? You never thought it would get out. And it did. Freedom of Information Act. You can access these things. Um, but y'all, she said what she said. You know, I, I said what I said. And um, there's no denying it. There's no taking it back. Um, back. Then when the phone calls happened, I was trying to stand by my man, be supportive wife, you know. Um, I've been married to this man for eight years. Um, I had no idea that all this was going on with him. I had no idea. And the charges that he's facing are horrific. They are really bad. Um, and um, I for sure did not want your name mentioned in any kind of way associated with my man. If you don't know what the charges are, because I know a lot of you guys don't follow all this, her, we can't say the specific charges because it's they're pretty egregious and, and disgusting. But let's just say he can't be around women. He can't be around children and he can't be around animals. So you do with that as you may. Women, children, animals is who he cannot be around. Oh Women, children, and animals. Mess. So I had to call you. I had to tell you it was a hard call, a hard call for me to make, um, but I called you. And um, I, I want to clear something up, Steve. Um, you did not introduce me to him. Um, I met him through a friend. Um, I should say an ex-friend now. Um, anyway, so, so back to what I was saying. I had to tell you he was in jail. It was going to come out. Now, that's important because it's been reported that Steve introduced them. So if she's clarifying that, we are we're shady but fair. Um, so Steve did not introduce them. I'll take her at her word on that. I didn't want you to hear it from anyone else. I wanted you to hear it from me because I knew once the police and everyone, um, you know, got involved and they were already involved and they found out who his wife was and who she worked with and all of that, um, you know, and, and that's you, Steve Harvey. It would become, you know, a real big story because it's you, your name. And like I told you, Steve, when I called you, I didn't want to call you. I mean, I was embarrassed. I was hurt. You know, I, I felt so stupid and, you know, I felt betrayed, humiliated, you know, 
it, it was just terrible. I mean, I kept saying to myself, how is this my life? You know, police and jail and all of this. Um, it, it, it was just something that I didn't, you know, I've never experienced anything like this. The police came, they took my car. Um, I was at the salon getting my hair done. They rolled up, took my car. Um, I had to have my stylist take me home. I had to move in with friends. I lost my house. I lost everything. I want to say in terms of who she is as a person, it has to be hard to live your whole life doing the right thing. And, you know, you have your own money. You meet this man later in life. You get married. You think things are great. And then, bam, everything changes. And it changes in a way that is extremely public. So for that, my heart goes out to her because I believe as she's speaking in this moment, she's being truthful. And to be a good person, to do the right thing, and then you marry the devil, um, you sleeping with the enemy, it has to be hard. So I do feel she's being very genuine, especially with the Marjorie stuff. Everything. Oh, and, and I, um, I have to tell you this, too. Um, like on the day, July 4th, um, we were having dinner with friends and we were going to watch the fireworks after that. And so the fireworks didn't happen that night because it was like a terrible, terrible storm. So the fireworks got canceled. And um, when I look back, I, I see now that that was kind of a metaphor for what was about to happen in my life. The thunderstorms were coming. They were coming. Uh, the next day was the last time I saw him. He was arrested the very, very next day. Um, you know, I didn't even know he was arrested. I couldn't get in touch with him uh, later that day. The letter this morning, as you can see, is a very, very real letter. Uh, I'm not going to interrupt it at this point. Shirley was going over some of the key points about how she discovered uh, the actions of her husband, the date that she discovered it. She's apologized for the things that were said uh, about uh, myself and Marjorie in the letter. I'm not responding right now. I'm allowing her to tell her story. Uh, I think it's important that a person tells their side of it. Because like I said earlier, this is not, this is no longer hearsay. This it's interesting though, that now she's telling her side, this has been all over and not technically really, really addressed in this manner. But once it impacts Steve, now it needs to be addressed in the strawberry letter. It's a little weird. It's a little weird. Um, L'Oreal, thank you so much for the super sticker. I appreciate you. Uh, be blessed. Congratulations on reaching 60,500 60, um, subscribers. Thank you so much, everybody. It, it does not seem real that we are growing to 60,000 already, but we're here. Uh, and we're not going anywhere. Even if they demonetize my videos, even if they put age restrictions on my videos of all people, me getting age restricted videos, doesn't matter. Um, somebody said a whole man talking about their slip slowing. I found out what the slip was from married to medicine. I did not know. <laughs> Wait, technically thinking back, I think my grandmother used to wear slips, but I didn't really know. I didn't connect it till Mariah from Married to Medicine said it. Uh, your slip is showing. <laughs> um, thank you, Be Blessed, for being a member for six months. Somebody, Dante, Dante said he read you, Mims. Uh, yeah, he tried. He did come for the bloggers, but I got some for him when we get to that part of this story. Dante, I got some for him. Let's continue. <laughs> This is not gossip or rumor. This is real life. So, Shirley, you can continue. All right. Um, so I, I was telling you how I found out that he was in jail. Uh, I got a call from the jail and, you know, I didn't answer it because I'm like, who would be calling me from jail? I looked at my phone like jail. Where's this call? You know, it, it just didn't compute. Um, so I just ignored it. But he got word uh, to me through one of his friends. They texted me that he was at Fulton County Jail. So um, the next time he called, I picked up and that was him that I called earlier from jail. And, you know, he told me what happened. I, I thought he would be getting out in a couple of days because that's what he told me. But of course, you know, here we are a year later, those days turned into weeks, the weeks turned into months. And like I said, I don't, uh, this, this is just on and on every day. It's just something. And, and my life has just been a nightmare ever since. And it's still going on, Steve. I mean, I had no idea that those tapes would be released to the world. You know, I, I knew that they were being recorded, but I didn't know that they were going to go out to the world. I mean, I was just trying to make conversation with him, uh, trying to, you know, just get him to think about something other than where he was. You know, um, I was telling him about my day, this particular day, and that was the, the day we were talking about, um, you know, uh, on the phone when I, I said those things about you and the, the things that you heard and um, the world heard. Um, and cut you today. Um, I haven't spoken to him in quite some time. Um, divorce proceedings are underway. And, and Steve, at this point... I'll I'm glad to see that she has finally seen the light. His charges were horrendous. Um, they were really, really, really bad. And we have now since found out that he had a woman living right next door to him and Shirley who was his alleged other partner 
in crime and everything else. Think Ralph Courtney. <laughs> um, yeah, she good for her that she's getting out. But again, she's doubling down. What she said is what she said. Marjorie thinks of them as the help. Steve is scared of her. And, you know, it is what it is. She said what she said, and she said it with her chest. And for that part, we'll respect her. I said what I said. Okay. I mean, all I can say is what I have is my faith. Um, if it wasn't for God, I probably would have, you know, lost my mind or something in, in this instance. Um, you know, people don't see what happens when these mics go off. Um, you know, who wants their personal stuff, their private conversations to go out to public? No one, no one wants that. I mean, what can I say to you after this, you know, happened? I, I was devastated. I, I mean, absolutely devastated. I mean, I thought of everything, you know, I could lose my job. I, you know, how could I face you? E everything, you know, what I'm going through is what I'm going through, you know, and I've been going through it for over a year. I just haven't spoken about it. You know, then on top of all that, these tapes come out and, Ugh, you know, I'm talking about you and Marjorie and you guys are going through your own private hell right now. You know, you didn't need me to contribute to anything, you know, and, and I, I thought back, you know, because I, I, I knew I had to say something. Speak on, you created this, created this term years ago in Los Angeles called reality radio. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is about as real as, as it gets, you know. Um, <laughs> sure. And the reason I'm here before you now, I wanted to say it live on the radio, is because your name is in it. You know, we've been friends for a long time, Steve, and, and, and these jail calls were made public, and I wanted to give you and Marjorie a public apology and to ask for your forgiveness publicly. I, I, I just wanted to have a real moment with you. And, um, you know, I have to tell you, I've been coming to work every day because, you know, it's... I'm not apologizing for interviewing Jim Townsend, Marjorie's ex-husband, and getting his vantage point. Um... I did a whole timeline. If you're new to the channel, I did a whole timeline of Steve Harvey and the women who came forward about being with Steve Harvey. Uh, I, I mean, there are things that I have not done. Like, technically, I did get some stuff that I just chose not to disclose. You know, certain things I just don't want to touch. But, yeah, I don't feel bad about any of that. <clears throat> It's my only safe haven right now. It gave me a place where I could still be myself and forget my troubles for a little while, you know, and just, you know, do my job. You know, I, I want to thank you guys. I, I want to thank you, of course, Steve, Tommy, Jr., and of course, my girl Carla, you know, for the space and the grace that you guys have shown me. Um, you know, this is a very difficult time in my life, if, if you can imagine. You know, I, I just, I love you guys. We're family, and I thank you, and I just want to thank everyone. I, I'm just trying to live. I, I'm sorry for what you and your wife are going through right now in your life, and I hate your names for dragging into my drama because you certainly don't deserve it. Well, surely, let me. She's fighting for her life. I totally believe her. And Steve Harvey's name and Marjorie Harvey's name is getting drugged technically as no result of your own. You said a little something. You might have, you know, said something about your boss that you regret saying, but you did not ruin these people's lives. Steve refuses to talk about. Man, it was why you're grinning. I just. Uh... We're going to get into Steve Harvey coming for bloggers. That's why I'm grinning. In terms of how I feel about Shirley, chalk it up to my head, not my heart. My heart goes out to her because I feel like she's fighting for her life right now on this radio show. She can't lose this job. She doesn't have any money, technically. She didn't have a car, a place to live. So, But I, I'm just waiting to get to Steve. Let me say this. First of all, what's happening to me and Marjorie, I'm, I'm going to address that. But let me say this, though. The, the devil is busy. The devil is busy. And the devil don't come for those he got. He sends those that he has. So now, with all that's going on around us right now, what I do understand, though, see, this jailhouse conversation you had was last year in October 2022. But the devil know how to pile on at the right time. So this tape that was made in October 2022 gets released right on the heels of all of this to just pile on some more. And I, I guess you say, you know, it was recorded because, you know, when you if everybody get that phone call, who ain't had that phone call? Who kind of, please know that that phone call, this phone call is being recorded. We come back, we'll address some more. But this, this strawberry letter looks like it's about to be the nine o'clock hour. So we'll be back with more of the Steve Hart Morning Show right after this. Letter to Shirley to tell her story, whatever she wanted to do. We didn't rehearse this. We didn't plan this. Shirley came out and apologized for the things that were said about myself and my wife. But I also realized, and I know the timing of all this is important. Because this conversation she had with her estranged husband was in October of 2022. The tapes got released right now. So, and then when you can throw my name on anything, because you look at all these stories, my, my name headlines and stuff. And so Shirley, when he came out, she called right away, apologized and everything. I, not, and, and so I understand that. And Shirley didn't want her mess to become our mess. 
let me say this to you, Shirley. We have known about this right after it happened. But we can't get in nobody's marriage and just go, girl, what you doing? What you, what you thinking? What you we thinking? didn't want to say nothing. They didn't want to say nothing. We didn't want to talk because about it. We didn't want to talk about it. And we wanted to create for you a space where you could come to work and have some moments. Because I know what it's like. And you did. To get beaten and eaten alive. And so it, it became, for us, let's just be there for her. And when you want to tell us, when you, you will tell us yeah. when you're ready. Now, good thing you had Monica, Mississippi Monica, who has been with you this whole ride. You did confide in her. So Monica would keep us posted. But until you wanted to invite us in, we were just left over here as a support system. And so can I say, just, yes. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but can I just say this? It's, I look at you guys as my family, you know? We, we all are family. You know, a lot of times we... We, there was a time when we saw each other more than we saw our actual families. And, you know, it was just so hard for me to, to, to I'm, a, I'm a private person, you know, but we all have our stuff. We talk afterwards, we're friends, we're all that. It was just hard for me to bring this particular thing up. I okay. Sharon Middleton, thank you so much for joining a member. There will be a members only live and members only live is going to be kind of like behind the scenes because I got a lot going on and I actually need some help with the channel. I have a whole nother channel that I'm creating and I need help with the name and all kinds of stuff. That members only live will be you guys chance to come up. It'll be a smaller setting. I think we have about like 100 and maybe like 50 members, um, but there will be one this week for sure. I will allow people to come up. We can have like some no holds bars kind of conversations. So thank you for joining the membership. Look out for the announcement of when we're going to go live. Um, be blessed. <laughs> Ernesto had a cousin Faith living next door. Yes, he did. And I believe that he's trying to pin everything on her as if she was the mastermind. Somebody had a really good point. Um, I think it was Dina saying that this will help their ratings. Definitely. I've not listened to the Steve Harvey morning show in, I don't know, umpteenth years. But I had to listen today. So it's not like he does not understand the way the business works. You are capitalizing off this. Your ratings are going to be through the roof because you consistently announced since last week that you were finally going to address some things. So just like you're talking about bloggers or whoever did the phone calls, it's exactly what a PR person or a business manager would tell you to do. If something is trending, like Steve Harvey and Marjorie Harvey alleged allegations of cheating, then it would only make sense. That's the way the business works. You talk about trending topics every day on the radio show. They talked about the cop who was cheating on, he was cheating on his wife. It was a white cop cheating on his wife with a black woman. His wife was black as well. They talked about all this. It's a trending topic. Do you think that they could then say, oh, wow, you're reporting on this. And so this is bad because you're piling on. I'm already having, I've already been suspended. And now I got Steve Harvey talking about it. That's not the way this works. And you know that, but you're pandering to your audience to like, we're not intelligent enough to see what you're doing. Come on now, be, be smarter than that, Steve. I, I was just so embarrassed you know, and humiliated, and I just felt like a fool. I felt so stupid, and, you know, I, I, I couldn't. I, it's not that I didn't want to talk about it. I, I just couldn't find the words, and that's the honest to God's truth. I just couldn't come to you guys. You know, if you had come to me, I would have opened up, but, I, you know, I understand, but I just, I couldn't. It was too much. It was just too much for me at that time, you know? Okay. Sure, we did. Hang on. Uh, the strawberry letter's been extended. This is important, y'all. We'll be back with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. Addressing it all. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on the recap, because we got so many things to go over. But if you've been listening, you've been listening. If you haven't, then you just got to get brought up to speed. We're on the iHeart app. You can play it all day long. You need this whole interview. Shirley opened up with the apology to me and my wife. And uh, I, I was wanted to make you all aware of the times of it. You know, uh, my wife and me, we've been getting beat up for the past two weeks. But when when something like this happens, you know, we our motto has always been to never address bloggers. Right. And we don't right. we don't give it no room or speed. No life. No, no nothing. Because we know who we are and we know whose we are. Well, technically... And I'm going to put allegedly, but if you know who Essie Berry is, Steve's arch nemesis, Essie Berry actually became an advocate for Steve's second wife. Um, she made all of these allegations about her husband. Essie Berry was there as her advocate. Essie Berry alleges that Steve Harvey um, has gone to the police on her. 
And I believe she says she still can't go to Texas because that's where the warrant is or something like that. So you have allegedly gone after bloggers per SC Berry. She's a blogger. Um, so. And so we don't we don't address. Oh, bloggers. not when only the- SC Berry. There were a couple other blogs that he went after. Um, I can't think of the name, but um, was, was I believe it was for the love of the Jews. Um, she used to be a very funny blog. I don't know if she still does it. And there was another gentleman. But yeah, you you do address bloggers, maybe not directly, but you definitely allegedly have sent your attorneys have sent stuff to bloggers before. When this came out, it's a little bit different because it's not gossip, rumor, or, or malicious lie. It came know. from the inside circle. Because we're inside circle. We're family. And so when it came out, you know, Marjorie is on baby watch right now. We got another grandchild coming and the baby's due any minute. So Marjorie's over there on baby watch. She's just doing grandmama duties. And Marjorie don't really get into all this right here. And so I didn't. What do y'all think grandma duties for Margie would be? Making sure the maids clean up the room. Some online shopping or having Neiman Marcus come to the mansion to pick out clothes. Um. She's not sterilizing bottles, I don't think. I don't like what <laughs> she's not gonna be. What is it? The 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 there's like what is it called when you actually deliver the baby? What does that mean for Marjorie Harvey worth hundreds of millions of dollars? She's probably I'm surprised she's not at Fashion Week. That's really why I thought Marjorie would have been. <laughs> and really, you know, look, I'm so used to getting beat up, but I didn't know how Marjorie was feeling about everything that's out there. Because these these bottom feeders are just beating my wife up. And even though we've made a conscious effort and we said we're not going to address it, I'm, I'm tired. And so when this came out, this is how the devil worked. I'm going to pile it on. I'm going to go get somebody that worked for me. Because one more time, God don't come. God, the devil don't come for those he got. He sends the ones he has. So now I'm going to get me a government employee that needs some money, that work in Fulton County. I'm going to get a hold of him. I'm going to release these tapes. I'm going to get him to need a little bit of money. I'm going to give it to this female. That's not true. What he just did was take the, you know, Mr. Kelly situation and apply it here. There is a website. I'm actually going to show you guys this website because they are the ones that released all the prison phone calls um where is it okay right here so they tell you on their website um the prison jail phone calls are acquired and paid for by this channel through the freedom of information act so you can actually request them now we can have debates on whether people feel as though you should be able to request them or not but in all honesty it's out there and they were smart enough to do it and they released it right as you were trending. Now, were you trending for something great? No. And in, in all fairness, if, you know, I think that a lot of the stuff about Marjorie would die down if Marjorie just owned any of it. Right. We already have Jim Townsend who I interviewed saying, you know, things about Marjorie She's always going to be a topic of conversation because of what she allegedly did in her community. And she's never made a mea culpa, right? There's never been a time where Marjorie Harvey has said, you know, I did this, I did this, or I did it to, you know, make sure that my kids had or, or whatever. We just know what her background is based on what Jim Townsend and other people have said. And Marjorie has skated by. That's always going to make her a topic of conversation because she's never actually came into her community and address the allegations if she was like jim townsend when i interviewed him i was very direct you know you did things you brought drugs into a black community where do you stand on that now and his whole his whole point was that's who i was it's not who i am and now i'm talking to kids and making sure that they don't follow in my footsteps i now know what i did was wrong we never had that we just have a beautiful woman with a beautiful daughter going to fashion week and allegedly had a very, very checkered past that involved drugs. But, um, you know, she's not required to, but it does feed the gossip. 
female blog and she gonna get a little bit of money and now I'm a soaker. But the timing of it was ugly because of everything else that's going on right now. And and, and, and it made it look like Shirley was piling on. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't her intent, but it happened. It, like, I, like I say, I understand. What I'm, the part I'm coming with now is because it then got, it's been so ugly for my white man. And see, this is what I've never done. His Achilles heel is Marjorie. The Achilles heel is Marjorie. Thank you, Helena D, for joining the member. Helena has been around since the beginning. We're like this. We see each other. Um, B Bless says, we have 1,907 sipping on this lunch tea and only 456 likes. Keep hitting the like button, family. Let's get the video. B Blessed is on it. Thank you, B Blessed. We should be at about 900 to at least 1,000 likes. Thank you. And y'all know my stuff just got demonetized. So this is a great way to support the channel. Um. Oh, and also my archway overview. Thank you guys. I did have to, I had to edit it very early this morning, re-upload it, and no, YouTube did not give me specifics about why they age restricted and demonetized a RHO review. But whatever. Um, thank you guys who watched it. I appreciate you. But done before. It's been so ugly for my wife, and I've stood there trying not to say nothing. But I'm not a blog. We, me, Shirley, Carla, Tommy, Mississippi Junior, we ain't a blog. We're a real media platform. And I don't know if you all know what it's like to wake up every morning that we get up. And our job and mission is to brighten your day. And it you do talk about trending topics and gossip. We do have Shirley Strawberry giving people advice on relationships. Um, we had Steve Harvey doing a skit as a preacher. You played some songs. You have the number one radio show. I would never take away your accolades, but to think that people who, I guess, like the Wendy Williams or bloggers or people who write for gossip magazines or page six, just because they're talking about you, is their stuff not real? Yours is real, but other people's isn't. And it don't matter how dark our day is. We got the job to be the morning show. And we got to put on the show. And Tommy come in here with, with, with Junior come in here off a crisis with sickle cell. Tommy come in here with bad news. Tommy get hit with cancer. Shirley going through her life right here. Carla got a whole family over here. Everybody got crosses to bear. But we got to come in here anyway, and we got to be the morning show. In spite of what's happening in our life, when it ain't funny or fun or inspirational or motivational or informative at all, we just in here trying to make it. So I get it. So what I'm about to do now. You're just trying to make it, but remember the people that work for you aren't allowed to talk to you, look at you, or anything else because you're the CEO. That's what you've already told us, Steve. You are not like the rest of us. Your problems and your staff's problems are bigger than everybody else's. Now, it's clear up a few things. And, 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 you know, the comment that came out, it was untimely. You know, that's why we don't have people in our house. That's why we don't, we, that's, that's, that's why a whole lot of stuff we don't do. But when I come back, We'll be back. And my fat weasel and ass was straightened all this Stop. out. I said I was sorry. Right. That's what, Shirley, that was directly to you. That's why we don't have people like you walking through my house. Now, Vogue or fashion editors or people who are of a certain caliber, sure. Let me take you on a tour. You can see my home. Shirley, you sit over there. Be glad that you made it past the gates. <laughs> It's so hard to find good help these days when you married to Whit the Gilbert, right, Steve? You know, <laughs> I'm sorry, you won't hear that. Uh, it takes too much time. Uh, my wife and I talked about this and I prayed about this, and Marjorie told me, Steve, drop it, let it go. But I see my wife's face and I see the pain she's been in. And she ain't just been in this pain for two weeks. She's been in this pain for 17 years with me. And so now what I want to do right now, I want to tell you something about my... Um, so, mm -mm, Leticia, she says she's smart by never addressing anything. She just let people think what they want to think. I'll give you that, right. Except now we are coming to a place where Steve just said she's been struggling with this for 17 years. So, is she... Was it the smart thing to do? Because once you tackle it, then people don't have anything else to come at you about. My wife. Because we sit up in here and we dealing with stuff and that y'all just 
printing lies and rumors and the, the viciousness of it is what I'm going to talk about. Now, let me tell you something. Normally, we don't care about your blogs and all this here, but I'm really tired of y'all, man. And you know the sad thing behind all of this? The majority of these blogs, they're black people. The very people that we try to uphold and uplift the most, what all of our foundation is about, about saving and changing the lives of young black people. And then it's the black bloggers that's the nastiest when it comes to all of us. And that's that's the part I want to I get at, and then I'm going to let it go. Because after today, ain't no more. After today, there will be no more. So when we come back, we'll be more the Steve Harvey Morning Show. I'm so sick of the strawberry love. We'll be- <laughs> it's the black blogs. Okay. Let's continue. <laughs> My marriage, I got divorced in 2005. My marriage was over when the Kings of Comedy was out. Y'all ain't know that though, did you? It was over then. It took us this long to get to the divorce. That's when the uh, official paperwork came out. But in 2005, let me help you to something. I had nothing. I lost the radio show we were on in LA on March 23rd, and I lost the only TV show I had, May 10th. Steve Harvey had no money. Got with Marjorie again on New Year's Eve, met her, talked to her. She was with her kids in Hawaii. We got together in 2006. We had nothing. She didn't marry to no land lap of riches. I had nothing. When I asked her to marry me at the end of 2006, and, I, and then she, she said she wanted to get married in 2007, I told her too soon, I, I got to get some stuff together. She said, what? I said, baby, I ain't really got nothing. I'm trying to build. She said, I'm going to get in there and build with you. We got married in 2007. Do you know what I was doing in 2007? Nothing. We had four stations in 2005. Four. We built this. All of us built this. We had four stations. We turned this into something. But that woman got down in there, foxhole with me and turned this into something. In 2007, we... Okay, so here's where things get a little tricky. So I told you, <laughs> um, there was a young lady who put out a book. Um, in that book, she alleged that she had a relationship with Steve. Um, only one person in the world got that book, G- Geneva's Closet. We read a chapter here on this channel. That woman said that she was visited by a very attractive black lady who Steve Harvey had sent to her and without really a explanation as to who the woman was. And the attractive lady asked a lot of very personal questions about her, kind of looked her up and down, wanted to know about a business that and how to run a business that Steve had helped her set up. That lady was Marjorie Harvey. If we go through the timeline, that would indicate that would be after her second drug dealing husband went to jail, that allegation would mean that Steve Harvey was still in her life. Steve Harvey's second wife did not know she was the mistress, allegedly, until Steve Harvey's mom told her, you can't marry Steve, you're the mistress. So we have the first wife taking care of the children. You moved in with the second wife. You met Marjorie Harvey when she was married um, and started a relationship with her left her alone, eventually married your mistress, Mary, then brought Marjorie back. All the stuff that Steve is saying about, you know, I was so broke and, you know, Marjorie was the only thing that lifted me up. Marjorie had lived a very good life. Jim Townsend set her up with real estate. And Jim Townsend alleges that she took the knowledge that she had learned from him as a kingpin and applied it and brought it to her next relationships. Do I think that Marjorie knows how to flip the game? Yes. Do I think that, you know, she was part of the problem at a point? Yes. Do I think that that makes for fodder? Yes. It's the same type of stuff that you would address on your morning show. What are we doing here? So does it mean that you're above reproach? You've wrote a lot of books about what women want and how to be in a relationship and what to do and what not to do and all these things. But what we don't have Although Steve has come forward and said he, he made some mistakes, he never actually outlined it, but he sells you the dream. And Marjorie was part of that dream. And now through all of these things coming out, it just ticks it down. It's no longer Marjorie, the pristine reputation. It's Marjorie, your stuff has come out. That's the issue that Steve is having. All of this stuff with Shirley was just the cherry on top. All of these things are not Shirley Strawberry's fault but she's taking the brunt on it just for saying how she truly felt about Marjorie Harvey. Just saying. It's a whole lot. I told you guys, I told you it was juicy and kind of deep, but I never expected him to go off on bloggers when you, you technically you do the same thing. You do hot topics on your show. Um, Mood hot. I I don't want to mispronounce it. It, Mood Nate. Mood Nate. I hope I said that right. 
Come on, Steve. Had she been able to walk through the house, you wouldn't have a reason to say she said <laughs> you snob. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. Um, Bernice, Ernest is in jail now serving 23 months for possession of a firearm and driving a stolen car because he's a convicted felon. That's not that's not other charges. Yeah, we know a whole lot of a whole lot of charges. Thank you for the super chat, Ms. Bernice. Um and Mary, the second wife, also alleges that she knew about Marjorie coming around way before they were divorced. These are all the allegations. These are the things that were there. <sighs> the uh, Mims, what does Steve owe the public? I don't know that Steve necessarily owes the public. I think that once you become a celebrity, um, love it or hate it, your stuff gets out. Now, had Steve married or not had such a checkered past, he probably would have a extremely squeaky clean image. It's just, uh, it's right message, wrong messenger. A lot of the times, a lot of people do not like a certain message coming from a certain person. And although a lot of people embrace Steve and they love Steve, you know, think he kids say the darndest things and, the um what was the other thing that he did the steve harvey show and the family feud a lot of other people you know hold his feet to the fire i think that comes with a certain amount of celebrity but does he technically owe anybody anything i'm 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 fair no nobody technically owes anybody their life but there are certain things that you give up when you become a celebrity um jasmine love your channel you ever thought about calling your supporters members <laughs> sorry if that sounds lame that actually would not have been bad, but we're the straight shooters. Uh, thank you for the super chat. Um, he writes books about relationships. Of course it can be judged. Can somebody tell me what Shirley did? Shirley talked to her husband in jail and basically said that Steve was scared of Marjorie, that Marjorie thought of everybody. Marjorie thought of his employees and people like that as the help. And that um, she kind of just pulled the the wool over people's eyes, pulled the wool off of people's eyes about Marjorie. And it's a problem because she's in the inner circle. It's not like me or a blog or the hateful black bloggers doing it. It's somebody who actually knows them and knows her. So that's what happened. And that's why she apologized. Um, when we got married in 2008, we found out that somebody had stolen seven years of my tax return. I ain't going to mention no name. And we owed the government $22 million and we in debt. But then guess what? She stayed with me in that. Then guess what? In 2009, I got family feud. In 2009, the book came out. In 2012, the talk show came out. I'm telling you, this woman got in the hole and built this with me. She didn't steal nothing. And I'm tired of y'all talking about my girl. Because my girl is one of the best women I've ever met. And why you black-ass people out there got these blogs like you just going to destroy somebody? I don't really know what that's about. Black ass people. But don't worry about it because it ain't working. Because all we are now, we are a tiger two handed, sir. Thank you for doing that. And you're not going to split us up. And we're not going nowhere. And she is none of what you said she is. And she's the best chick I know. Now I'm defending her. And you can feel how you want to feel about that. That's the God in me. But now just let me give you one piece of Steve. She's not any of those things that people say she is. Oh, I see you. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. Uh, we'll be back with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. Yo, it's the morning. I'm proud of you, sir. I really am. Yeah, sure. I'm proud, proud of you. It takes a lot of strength and a lot of courage to do what you did to be transparent like this, Shirley. You tell your story. Don't let other people tell your story. In our journey in life, we all make mistakes. Shirley, we all make mistakes. And yeah, we have to. You have to keep asking God to guide your steps. Mm -hmm. do you know. What I'm, I'm glad she's leaving the loser. I'm, I, I, I hope that. She did not invest all of her money into him, which technically would have been kind of like cleaning the money because she has legitimate money. She has a a very she has an admirable career to end up with, you know, a charlatan and a loser. Her own version of Peter Thomas. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Can I say this? We family and we got family members. There's not a moment that. I ain't got on Steve Nerd and he said in a private conversation with somebody else, you know what time we got on my damn nerd today? It's not like we haven't said things 
that we just say, you know what, the junior got on my damn nerve. I'm, I'm sick of junior. I've said that to somebody. I've said that to You know what I'm saying? Before I came to work, actually. Tommy getting on your nerves. You said before you opened the mic. Oh, he damn pictures he said it. Lord. You know, man, Carl is right. Tommy's right. Nobody wants their private thoughts from Come on, man. No. Um, this is interesting. Damn Pam says, Mims, it's like you have a love-hate relationship with Marjorie because Jimmy, but I keep saying he was Kelly. Y'all never says how young Marjorie was when he met. Actually, if you watch my interview, I held Jim Townsend's feet to the fire. If you actually, and you guys should watch my interview. Um, I actually addressed that. I said, Jim, how can you make allegations about Marjorie when, and technically it was 18, um, or at least that's what has been, that's a story that's out there. I said specifically, how can you say Marjorie did this when technically she was the one that, you know, you were already married, you turned her into the other woman. And if she did anything with the drug game, you taught her this. You also were the one who would send her to the mall with $10,000 back in the 80s. And if she brought back change, you would tell her, no, you need to spend it all. I said, how can you be the one to say that anything about Marjorie without acknowledging that you created whatever this image is? And he, you know, he paused, he took a minute and he said, yeah, I did. I do hold people's feet to the fire. I don't just, I don't just interview them without any, any back and forth. There are, you know, nobody's perfect. Um, he answered the questions honestly. And I also held his feet to the fire regarding what he did in the black community. I said, it feels like you, you wear it as a badge of honor that you brought Coca-Cola into the black community in the eighties. And that you were the first person to have it in, I think it was like Tennessee. And he, that's when he, you know, addresses the fact that he made mistakes and what he's doing now is trying to make up for that and teaching people what not to do. And so if I expected of him, if those allegations about Marjorie are true, then I would expect that from her as well. But thank you for bringing that up. We're fair around here. We're shady, but we're fair. If you watch the interview, you know that I definitely held his feet to the fire about some things. Nobody. Do you know what would happen if any of us had our private thoughts in private conversation? Hey, Lord, yeah, I do. We wouldn't have no damn. We wouldn't have a morning show. Y'all wouldn't be. Y'all show wouldn't have a job out there. I just think that everybody. We don't live in a world that's forgiving anymore. Not at all. We don't live in a kind world anymore. We live in a fallen world. But we do have a lot of huge fans on this show, and we do understand that there's a lot of people who love us. The problem, and I've said it a hundred times, is hate is louder than love. But love is strong. And we all gonna have to learn that lesson. And, and as much as I wanna get out there and change things, and as much as I wish people would stand up and back me more, that ain't the world we live in. We live in a social media climate and everybody's idea is to tear somebody down to get clicks. Mm. And we're just not gonna sit here and let you click this sister's life away. And I'm not gonna sit here no longer and let you just Um, somebody says, So why is Jim forgiven for his past descriptions, but not Harvey's? I'm not here to forgive anybody. Um what I can say is addressing it and showing change and moving forward is one thing. I'm a person who believes that people who go to jail can definitely come out and, and change their lives and be, you know, good citizens and all that. It's not for me, but we're talking about public opinion. And in the court of public opinion, Jim has come out and, you know, made his amends. The Harveys have not. It doesn't even get addressed or touched. And I remember in that book reading of the alleged other woman who was having that exchange lunch with Marjorie, Marjorie was telling her how she, you know, her children went to the best schools. I want to say it was in Chicago. Her, and her children went to the schools with the mayor and this and that. She's had a very great life. And kudos, I mean, in terms of, where she started to where she came from, she should be the one writing a book. She would sell a million copies in the first week if she was upfront and honest about her past. Destroy my wife's image and character. It's hard and we need each other to support each other to show love. Now, look, man, do I expect this to change anything? Probably not, but you know what? At least it feels good to say your piece. Sometimes, yes. man, yes. you yes. just want to be able to say your side of it. 
to tell your damn story, your truth. Now, are they going to twist it? Yes. Yes. Are they going to try to flip it and use it against you? Yes. But I got news for you. Isaiah 54, 17 is real. It's the word of God. And I don't care what you do, what God got for me, what God got for you, what God got for Shirley, ain't nothing you can do about it. What God got for Carl, what God got for Junior, for Tommy, for Monica, there's nothing you can do about it. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. You know what's really crazy, man? Do you know really how YouTube and all this stuff works? Do you know how many tens of thousands of clicks you have to get to make three to five cents? Do you know how many millions of views you got to have to make thousands of dollars? But here what happened. When y'all jump on that danger. Technically, that's TikTok, specifically. You damn down trail and you post your video what y'all do to each other is y'all cannibalize each other so if y'all would just leave that one video everybody would have to go there to see it and that person could pop it but no y'all take it like y'all did your music and you spread it on your site now a person can go anywhere and get it now guess what now ain't nobody getting a million views so don't nobody profit no weapon formed against me show that's technically not true um i wonder if he was talking about tasha k um because tasha k when she was on this was getting millions of views things have changed but um i don't think tasha k is broke by any stretch of the imagination um she's still viable on youtube so i don't know i feel like he was probably trying to talk directly to her because she's one of the biggest people who have really kind of reported on all of these things over the course of the years i think her her jim townsend interview got about a million so i'm pretty sure she made some money how much I don't know, but I felt like he was probably trying to address Tasha, excuse me, without actually saying her name. Excuse me. And I just wish, man, that we as a people would get out the hate business because the hate business don't pay. I don't know if y'all been watching real close, but if you look at anybody out there that's been in the hate business, that don't look real good right now. I don't know if you noticed that. Listen, y'all, there's a, a motivational speaker named George White, and this dude, he released something. So, <laughs> Mickey says Shirley trying to save her job and was riding for this man after her daughter got a protection order against him says a lot about Shirley as a woman now I did not address this but yes um, the allegations go she basically chose Ernesto her dog husband over her daughter and that's why a lot of people do not have any sympathy for her I would be interested to know if her and her daughter have now made amends um uh, to not like take the word of your child that's something deep that's something deep um i can't imagine somebody says she's 69 let me confirm that shirley strawberry age oh she is 69 so to have to start all over, to be fearful of your, excuse me, to be fearful of your job, I do feel bad for her. I don't want the sins of Ernesto to really be how I think about Shirley. Everybody makes mistakes and she, you know, has lived a, I guess, drama-free, um, crime-free life. But the whole thing of not taking your daughter's word over a man, that's something she's going to have to live with. So I'm trying not to, per se, really get on her about that. That's something that she's going to have to really do some soul searching and make amends for and hopefully make it right with her daughter. Um, yeah, I know. It, it, it's crazy. We got Steve Harvey writing books on what to do and how to, you know, how to be in the effective relationships, successful relationships, all these things, surely giving out relationship advice. It's the hypocrisy all over. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of hypocrisy. But um, guys, thank you guys for being here. Uh, oh, oh, Jim Townsend's book. We're doing a book club. I have it. I went ahead and bought it. And Jim Townsend will be here for one of the chapters. So I, I keep saying we're going to do it. We're going to definitely start this this week. Um, so you will want to tune in. Maybe we'll do lunchtime because you guys seem to like these lunchtime lives. Um, Otto's mom says that's not completely true. She said her daughter didn't talk to her after her daughter talked to the police. So she didn't know why her daughter got the protection order. Hmm. Okay. Shout out to Autumn's mom. Autumn's mom keeps her ears to the streets. The cover needs a refresh. <laughs> 
I, you know, um, I don't know if any of you guys have bought it already, but I will see you guys later. We're definitely doing this book. I'm out. <laughs> this was crazy.